So in this final bit of uh, La Campanella, where things get really tricky, uh, I'm going to show how I use my gobs method, if you like, uh, to improve this passage, which is, like I said, very tricky. Now, to get into it, I'll just, I'll just show you by example what the problems are. So you play that covered up chromatic scale made out of octaves. down into that chord on animato. Usually it's a very difficult moment. Most pianists take a little bit of time to, to, to make sure to land this chord accurately. And I don't mind this idea. I think if you take time to start animato, that's fine. But once you get into animato, you really have to go like bad out of hell. tell as I play through the rest of it suddenly I lose form and my left you know if you can slow this down you could see how my left hand is not quite hitting all the right keys my right hand is kind of getting all over the place hitting a bunch of wrong octaves and so obviously since that's the very last bit of the piece and you want to make sure it's as clean as possible you have to go through some pretty rigorous uh, practice uh, in order to get there and so I'll start right from the animato and what we're going to do is find where my first problem occurs. Right. So even though there were some issues in the first measure, I don't really hear as many problems in it as I hear in the following measure. So let's go ahead and go to that measure 130. Okay, so here we go. To cover up what I don't need to do, or not need to focus on, I'm just going to play that measure 130. So the irony of this pro uh, situation is that by me focusing on just one measure at a time, I can play it better than if I had to play it in the context of the previous measure going into this measure 130 and losing form at some, losing concentration at some point as I'm petered out by playing measure 129 and then going into measure 130. So oftentimes you kind of have to, I'm going to have to reduce my zoom level a little bit so I can show both of these measures. So oftentimes you have to kind of block off maybe like that. So half of a previous measure into the next measure to locate where the problems occur. Or just listen and play a bunch of times, stop right away and then, oh, okay. Okay, so right, right away, from starting at this half measure, I noticed that my left hand completely missed this D sharp. So I'm going to fix it. I'm going to go ahead and make it be my goal. Now I've lost my covers a little bit. Give me a second to figure them out. So the right upper cover should be on the right. The bottom cover is here. I'm just going to cover all of this up and use this cover to cover everything up like this. So um, the problem right now is I'm going to go right onto the problem is that D sharp in the left hand, the D sharp octave. And not do, only do I have to play the D sharp, of course I have to leap all the way down. So I will put in my position symbol to show you visually what I'm having to do. And that's what I'm going to practice. So at first my practice will actually involve holding down that, that octave in the left hand. That's why it's kind of half covered up. And I'm just doing the leap as quickly as I can. One more time. Now notice my torso is moving out of the way, but that's a possibly dangerous idea because I need to consider the fact that my right hand is playing as well. So really, oh, wrong fingers. 
I need to put both hands on the keys right away so that I can align everything as best as I can. So the torso should really be right here centered on this G, right between these two hands. And then I'm practicing this. So I'm going to hold both hands down and then that's the move. It has to be super fast because this is animato and it is list. Boom. Of course, I'm not showing it, but there is a very slight adjustment in the right hand. And you can probably barely see it since I've reduced the zoom level quite a bit. But you see what's going on. I have to hold this chord. In my performance, I will be playing that chord and instantly letting go and moving down. Boom, like this. So I need to establish my goal in this gobs method that I'm trying to uh, discuss here and uh, until I know what this goal feels like, how I can play it comfortably or at least as comfortably as I can do it today, I'm not going to do anything else. All right, so I'm here. By the way, in the right hand, one other thing to point out is I could be playing this chord here on the edge of the white keys, but really it's not going to work because then I have to do this all the time, right? In and out, in and out. So I really have to teach my right hand to always keep the thumb next to the black keys, like that. So I'm going to be holding it here. I'm going to hold this D sharp octave in the left here, and then I'm going to do this. And I know already it's too slow, but for right now, that's probably the best I can do. Right, I'm feeling all these upper arm muscle fibers scream. Boom. Has to be a precise ninja-like strike. Boom. Okay, let's say I've done as, as best as I could for right now. I'm going to move my goal just a little bit back. Now we're actually going to play this chord and leap as well. Correct fingers, yeah, good. So, now notice I should really be using the pedal, right? Of course, it's list, big moment, but for practice sake and my ears sake, I'm going to play relatively quietly, not with the full force that I'll allow myself once I've learned this passage and I'm not using the pedal. Although, of course, it will be used eventually. Right. So keep working on nothing but that leap. Good. All right, so let's say I've done that snippet. Now let's keep going back. And now I'm holding the G sharp in that instance in time. I've pressed pause. I'm not going to be holding that C sharp octave just before my cover because it's, it's all going to be played pretty much staccato with the pedal. So I'm already in position to play this chord. I'm holding the G sharp octave in the left hand. I'm about to do this and then I'm about to do this. And I forgot to do this. Right? So a lot of things to coordinate. A little better, still kind of shaky. All right, again, I need to remember my torso midline. Where is it going to be? Right around here. One more time, so on G sharp, a little too much force, a little out of control. Ah, it's very hard to get this octave. It's kind of there, but not reliable. So it's one three on this G sharp. On all my G sharps, I'm doing one three. On all the D sharps, I'm doing one five. If you like a different fingering on this passage, I'd, I'd love to know what that is. Get, getting this and then leaping all the way down is hard. Good, all right. Okay, again, I'm kind of rushing through the process here. And I don't really think you should dwell on it for like many minutes or hours because you, you just want to do just enough, put it into your brain and let your brain sleep on it. Very important. Okay, so I'm going to this point now, which is I'm actually holding down the C sharp, fingers one, four, I'm holding down the D sharp, the lower D sharp octave with one and five, 
and I'm about to press this. So kind of imagine this is a video, I've hit pause. Okay, so I, I'm in this paused mode and I'm thinking what's, what, is, what is about to happen. And then once I'm ready, I go. Oh, that was beautiful. I instantly made so many mistakes that I could focus on correcting. Oh, great, right? I'm, I'm missing the G sharp. I'm, I'm not quite precise on this chord. So just that one extra step backwards reveals so many problems about my composure, my form and so on. So this is something I'm going to keep working on. I'm um, not going to obviously make a super long video, but um, <laughs> once I do good work that feels like I've learned something new today, I'm going to set it aside, sleep on it, and then keep coming back to it over the course of the week so that it becomes more and more automated, easy. It doesn't require so much conversation until eventually I can just play this whole measure perfectly. But uh, So I might upload some more videos on this particular snippet to see how this progress is going. But yeah, that's, that's how gobs works. Establish your goal, make sure you can do it as comfortably as you can, and then just keep stepping back bit by bit, always analyzing what am I doing wrong? What can I improve today? And that's, that's kind of how you learn stuff. Well, how I learn stuff. I mean, if you learn it differently, let me know. I actually used to do lots of things like rhythm practice and slow practice, but in reality, it never seemed to work out as well as this kind of focused backward stepping method. Anyway, I'm going to stop the video now.